Shabbat Shalom, dear community family. As we continue through this very challenging time for the Jewish people, we have entered the months of good fortune, of joy, of success, of victory, of the transformation of negative to positive, of the eradication of evil, as we will celebrate during this two-month period, the holiday of Purim twice. Once a minor celebration, which is during this month, and during the second month of Adar, which is the sleep year, we will have the major celebration. However, this entire 60-day period is endowed with a special powerful fortune of goodness and kindness. To such a degree, as we mentioned, that according to Jewish law, if a person has a challenging thing that he has to address, a case, a court case, an issue of of that magnitude, he should try to have it during this two-month period because it forebodes good ending, good fortune. Together with that, we read this week the absolute culmination of the objective of God to dwell in this physical world. God created the world in such a way that his presence, his being, had to be constantly part of our consciousness and of our world. That's the way we started out in the Garden of Eden. And that's what the objective is for the Jewish people as we march through the journey of history. We read about Revelation a few weeks ago. We got a commandment of living, living according to the morals, ethics, standards of Jewish holy life. And this week we read about the building of the tabernacle the building of a house for God, a house that would serve as a meeting place for God. To such an extent that the verse tells us, God says, make for me a sanctuary and I will dwell within it. Within it, it should say, make for me a sanctuary and I will dwell within them. But God says every single Jew is a sanctuary. I will dwell every single place that a Jew lets me in. And we read about in detail the building of the tabernacle, the building of the vessels, service that was going to be performed in this temple, the service, the conduit, the middle place, where man spoke to God and God responded to man. That's where Moses communicated with God. And that's where God communicated with Moses. In great detail. Our objective is to make this world a dwelling place for God, which means a place of goodness, of peace, of balance, of equilibrium, of kindness, a fulfillment of our mission to light up the entire world, to live a godly, positive way of life. It's interesting that we read in the, in the Megillah, in the story of Purim, we read about this amazing miracle. Against all odds, the Jews were sentenced to genocide Every single Jew was going to be killed in the entire civilized world in 127 lands. Already decreed by a decree from the king signed by his signet ring. And then it turned around miraculously as a result of the Jews' connection to God, as a result of their prayers, as a result of their becoming integrated and unified again instead of fragmented, where a majority of the Jewish people were assimilating. And there was fragmentation and then the weakness comes in the evil sets in because when Jews are fragmented the vessel is broken when the vessel is broken it leaks it does not have the energy it needs and when the Jews coalesce together as one we read about their miraculous miraculous being saved every single Jew and how they eradicated by the decree of the king all those that threatened to hurt the Jew 75,000 in all the lands and then an additional 800 in Shushan. And even after the first day of their protection, when they got rid of most of the evil people, the king said, I'm going to give you an extra day because you have to get rid of every single one of them. When a germ is allowed to stay alive and lurk, that germ multiplies radically. COVID, if it was sustained and maintained in the privacy of a of a locked space, it would have not have done anything. And now it has changed the ways of the world. 
one germ. What evil? And therefore, the Megillah tells us historically, you got to get rid of the evil, even when you have the majority and the king's on your side. If you have allowed that evil to continue to exist, eventually it will come back again and haunt you. And therefore, it's clear the Jewish people have one mission, to live safely. Jewish people want to know that we are God's chosen people. We're not going to let anybody eradicate us, threaten us in our land, in our space that God gave to us. And therefore, we must take it to the end game. We must eradicate the evil to the last one of them, particularly the leadership. And he, even though the leadership already was dead, Haman was hung, his 10 sons were hung, the main collaborators of this event were all dead. Mordechai moved into a palace. Boris says, get rid of the evil. God, in order to have a dwelling place in this physical world, must get rid of the evil. And when you bring God into the equation and God's emissaries, the IDF, and everyone that dedicates their life to saving Jewish people, they will and will be victorious. As many of you have heard the story that took place here in the shul. My wife gives a class on a Saturday with a nice attendance of a lot of women. And this Israelis were invited to come and speak. They spoke to us on Shabbat and they spoke during the week again. Heartbroken woman. Her father was a captive, captured by the Hamas and had been captured already for three and a half months. And the reason they were here, they said they don't need anything. They didn't come for money. They didn't come for us to do anything. They just wanted the world not to forget, to bring consciousness, awareness. And then they were sitting there, all these women, and my wife said to herself, we got to do something real. She said, it's time for us to get out of our comfort zone. And she then asked this lady, her father was the prisoner, she said, do you light the candles Friday night? She said, no, start lighting candles. And in the merit of lighting candles, when you light your candles, you'll think, I want my father to be free. And you will bring forth, you will evoke Hashem's participation in the most dynamic way. And then she asked the son-in-law, who was the interpreter for his heartbroken wife, do you put on tefillin? She says, no. If I give you a pair of tefillin, will you put them on every day? He said, how about if I start next week? She says, no, start tomorrow. Come to my husband's office and we'll get a pair of tefillin. And then there was a third party who brought them and he also did not have tefillin. And I am actually meeting him, the third party, tomorrow to put on tefillin with him. And then the wife, she was crying. She said, I want to ask one question. We already committed ourselves to two pairs of tefillin. And the wife says, can I ask for a third pair of tefillin? She says, why do you want the third pair? She says, I want to have a pair of tefillin in my house ready that when my father comes out, he'll be able to put on tefillin right away. My wife said, of course. And remember, when you light your candles, when your husband puts on the film, think about the fact that you need God to participate and you are connecting with God. And four days ago, her father and his friend were released by special forces, came home. We need God in our lives. We need unity in our lives. We need to live like real Jews on every level. And when we do, Hashem not only will not forsake us, He will battle for us. He will be the front line that brings us the power that we need to overcome all negative, all darkness, all those who want to bring havoc to the world and to the Jew who represents God in this world. And in such a way, we will merit to build the third temple very quickly and Mashiach will be here and we will live a life of balance, of goodness, of wellness, of peacefulness, of kindness. God bless you. Have a great Shabbos.